Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, where we invite leading minds and game changers with incomparable experience and unique knowledge to come on our lighthearted yet informative show. We aim to help business leaders and the wider community gain insights, grasp opportunities, and see behind and beyond spotlights so we can get the full picture, dream bigger, and achieve more together. I am your host for this episode. My name is Nick Chen, a lawyer and lawmaker. Friday Beyond Spotlights is honored and pleased to present to you our guest today, textile industrialist, the Honorable Sunny Tan, elected member of the Legislative Council representing the textiles and garment functional constituency. He's also chairman of the Hong Kong Productivity Council, executive deputy chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Industries, and senior advisor of a leading apparel and accessory manufacturer, Lun Tai Holdings Limited. They produce 74 million garments a year. Uh, may I call you Sunny? Yes, please. Sunny, welcome onto the show. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Sunny, Hong Kong is known to be a textile and apparel production and global sourcing powerhouse. How did we get there and where do we go next? We, we start to have the textile garment business back in the 50s, 60s, uh, where a lot of Chinese came from Shanghai, from Guangdong. They brought in capital, they brought in their expertise to start building the textile and apparel. That sets the foundation for us. Um, we move into 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, we are booming with a lot of production out from Hong Kong. But at the same time, because of the quota uh, system globally, um, our industry start looking overseas for different production countries. Mm -hmm. And in the 80s, 90s, they also start looking into China to start with. Mm -hmm. So that was the period where we've been really blooming in different aspects. What, what kind of quota is it? When we go into the year of 2000, um, if you remember, there was a time uh, China joining WTO. So not only that we are expanding overseas, but we've been very aggressive in growing our China. China in terms of export, China in terms of servicing its own demand. And um, we've been doing very well because there's no more quota at that time. But at the same time, China has been also going through its own rapid growth. The minimum wage has been slowly going up, which caused us to go back to overseas. So. Our Hong Kong businessmen uh, in textile and apparel, we have been playing a very significant, very important role throughout these times. Sunny, you talked about the global quota. Um, what is it? Um, back in the 60s, except more importantly in the 70s, um, the Europe and US, they imposed certain quota restrictions, whereas they limit the number of units of garments being exported from any particular country. So it could be from uh, China, from Hong Kong, Philippines, Southeast Asia. So every country will have a preset quota. And we as a Hong Kong businessman, what we've been trying to do is to find where quota is available <laughs> and we build the factory and to ship the goods. I see. Um, but whilst it looks fair, I mean, if back in the days, most of the garments are made in a few selected countries, then what looks like a fair system isn't necessarily you know, fair to everybody. Is um, that how you see it? I would say at that time it's not being fair, but I think there must be a certain political uh, motive mm -hmm. in setting up a quota system. Um, but in a more economic environment, if we look at it, um, the order should go to where the price is the lowest. Right. And right. at that time it could be some developing country, it could be including China, but then during that time, China is not, has not, doesn't have a big uh, growth at that time because mm. it's bounded by the limitation of the quota system. I see. Uh, Sunny, may I ask you to um, illustrate the stories you share about the evolution of the industry? We all have very strong entrepreneurial spirit. And as I said, during that time, quota has been limited our growth. So what we are trying to do is to go into different countries, including places that we might not have heard of but we will find places that we will be able to make garments at the right price. Right. But to overcome the challenge, uh, we need to know how to adopt the latest technology. It keeps our industry growing under the hands of our Hong Kong businessmen. I remember uh, having the joy of visiting the magic show. It's not about wrap it out of the hat kind of magic show, but that, I understand that to be one of the leading textile apparel's um, important trade um, conference. True. Magic show is one of the biggest um, show in the United States for our textile and garments, uh, where buyers, sellers, and brands, we all meet. Um, this is a very important show um, for all of us. The problem is our industry traditionally has become very inefficient. 
think about just starting with quota because we are not sourcing based on the most efficient factory or the cheapest country to make, but there could be different consideration in placing an order. So all these things are accumulating a lot of inefficiency in the entire supply chain. But at the same time, uh, lack of data because of lead time and, and also because the industry requires us to go through multiple parties from the factory to the brand to the retailer, we are losing data to decide what is selling and what is not selling. Maybe take my shirt as an example. Um, how do we decide what are the type of colors that we want to buy, mm -hmm. right? right? From the white to the blue to the pink to the stripe, right? But then we do not have enough data points back at the time when we place the order right. to the time that the retail actually happened. Yes. So what happened was uh, the white one maybe sells very well but it runs out of stock. And the blue one, maybe it's not selling well and you guys could end up selling at discount. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of inefficiencies happening mm -hmm. and all these can be addressed by technology. Now we are going through, we call the industry 4.0, mm -hmm. right? right? And industry 4.0 involves a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to achieve is to have the entire supply chain communicate along with all the data points. Mm. So for example, if we are able to shorten our production lead time mm. to have the decision in making the garment closer to the time the piece of garment really actually gets sold, sure. we would be able to channel the consumer behavior closer to the market to decide what color to make, what style to make. Mm. And it will eliminate a lot of unwanted, unnecessary inventory. Right. And also we don't need to have so much discount. And when we don't need to go through so much discount, it also means that our brands and retailers would not need to mark up so high. I mean, you talk about sourcing components from, you know, fabric from different parts of the world. Uh, are you using blockchain or some other technology to, you know, help when the authorities want to check where they came from? Um, how do you prove that it came from a certain place? But what I understand is um, blockchain technology has been looked into, uh, for example, for the fabric origin, and also another example would be uh, for fur, mm -hmm. right? So all these are in application, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, awareness and people work together now. You, you talked about um, country of origin. Uh, so there are rules about countries of origin, as I understand. Um, but I also understand the rules are being rewritten somewhat by the likes of OWCEP, LCEP. Uh, 15 countries and Hong Kong will still join on as an economy to OWCEP. How would that change how you produce garments going forward? Um, I think uh, OWCEP is a very good framework and arrangement for us because uh, we are par part of a bigger economy and uh, we will be able to freely move around to do business and be partner with where the country that we want to do business with. Uh, with the growing uh, market of, let's say, the Southeast Asia, as well as China, mm. our mother country, um, it poses a great opportunity for all of us. In terms of uh, smart fabric, uh, can you tell us more about that? Mm, smart fabric, or sometimes we call it some uh, um, more innovative fabric mm. uh, or functional fabric that we talk about. Mm. In fact, Hong Kong, we have an organization called the Hong Kong Research Institute for Textile and Apparel. Is funded by the government, but also closely working with our industries. Um, we work into a lot of um, areas of functional garments. It could be uh, water repellent, it could be uh, antibacterial, uh, antiviral. Uh, we also build the technology uh, to make garments for athletes. So all these things are happening in Hong Kong. Uh, we are not only good at making garments or textile, but we are also a leaders in terms of researching functional fabric. Um, Sunny, textile and apparel is a necessity for our daily living. But for some people, it's also a great way to express yourself and make a statement. Are you seeing more brand origination from Asia? And what are we doing about it? Um, I would say Hong Kong has a great opportunity in this area. Uh, one important aspect to make it successful is that we need to use our own strength in Hong Kong 
to make it happen. So what is the strength? The strength is what I said. We use our factory-based, OEM-based byproduct. We can come up with the best sweaters. Mm. It could be fur, it could be uh, lingerie, it could be caps, um, jackets. We have all specialties in this area. We just need to have them partner with our talent designers yeah. to come up with something that our consumer really wants. Partly because of design, but another part is really because there's a functional need mm -hmm. to address the pain point, the preference of what the consumer really wants. And the last point really, it's we need to know where's the market. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have the traditional European and US market, but then we have our huge China middle class mm -hmm. that has not been tapped into it so much. It poses a great opportunity for all of us. Sunny, could you share some advice for young people who wish to enter into this industry whether as a designer or otherwise? Our industry has so much opportunities. For our young people in Hong Kong to join, to be part of it, number one is passion. You got to love what you do because you will be with the piece of garment day in and day out. Um, second part is um, our young, young people, they got to have the courage to take risks. They're young, so take risks, come in and be part of it, okay? It's not easy, but I'm sure you will find the positive impact to us. Thank you, Sunny. We'll be back after the break.